Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If it looks like I am sweating buckets right now, it's because I absolutely am. It is so hot here on the Sunshine Coast. I'm currently hiding in my bedroom because, well, mum life and if I don't do it here, they'll find me and this is the quietest place I can find. So I had to turn the fan off because it was making too much noise. So now I'm in this hot little bedroom sitting by the window sweating to make this for you but I've committed now I'm gonna do it I'm gonna knock this video out because I really want to talk to you about something and then I don't know I'm gonna go float in the pool or something because at 20 weeks I am just an incubator in this heat so today I want to talk to you about why yelling at your kids is not a good idea for you and it's not a good idea for them and it really just doesn't work and I really want to get into the science behind it because I think we know like yeah, it's not very effective and we don't like how that feels, but when you get into the science of it, it's like, oh, that makes so much sense why it doesn't work. And and having that little bit of knowledge is really helpful when I get into like shouty mum stage because it kind of reminds me like, mm, this isn't really gonna help anyone. Probably best I just go hide in my bedroom. <laughs> also wanna say before we get started, I am in no way a parenting expert. I'm only almost six years into this, so, I only talk from my experience and this for me was a big one in changing how I interacted when we were having conflict in our family. So I'm really only offering you what I've learnt and how it's helped me. So don't by any means think I am an expert on this parenting gig. I'm not. So probably should start by saying that yes, I too sometimes head into yelling territory. Mostly it's just kind of raising my voice, but you know when you get into that I don't know, like that spiral where everything seems to be quite stressful and you sort of start raising your voice on top of them and then it just kind of escalates and escalates. I too get into that place. I am absolutely not Zen mama and I do not stay calm 100% of the time. I too sometimes have days where they're just driving me crazy and I can get into that spiral and heading towards feeling like I wanna shout or raise my voice. And sometimes I do. But more recently, I've really been trying to keep calm because I can see how it affects my kids when I do get into shouty mum mode. So full disclaimer, I've definitely been there. Maybe this will help you too. Maybe what I'm finding out is gonna be really helpful for you as well. So what I wanna introduce you to is this idea of Dan Siegel's hand model of the brain. And I was introduced to it at a yoga for trauma workshop. And it was just really fascinating how our brain works. And it's a really simple, oversimplified model of how our brain works. We'll link the original video where he explains the whole model to you because he does a way better job than me. But basically, if this is your brain, the little thumb under here is like the lizard part of your brain. So this part of your brain is responsible for things like your survival. So making sure you eat and all of those things that happen on automatic. And they call it the lizard brain because it's kind of that like animal part of the brain that works on instinct and um, autonomy, I guess. And then this part of the brain is the prefrontal cortex, which obviously humans have, and what makes us human is that we have reason and logic and empathy and all of those parts of the brain that come in when we make smart decisions, basically. But the thing is, is that in between these parts of the brain is a little trigger that's triggered by safety because we are wired to want to be safe for that connection because as humans connection with others makes us safe we are wired to survive and so we're triggered by things so certain things that come up in our lives our body sees as danger so when we get stressed what happens is whoop, this part of the brain becomes totally offline. So we call it like flipping the lid and that's essentially what happens. That's what happens when you start yelling. That's what happens when usually your kids are doing something that weren't yelling at. The lid is totally flipped. There is no reasoning. There is no logic. There is no empathy. They've just got this lizard brain that is like, I need to survive. Doesn't that just like make so much sense in explaining your kids behavior when they are just flipping out and you can't reason with them and you're like, where has my child gone who five minutes ago was beautiful and loving and empathetic and now you're like this crazy monster I don't recognize. And the, I'm sure you felt the same thing in yourself when you're like most of the time pretty chilled out parent and then 
you get triggered by something and suddenly you just can't control it. Like you're just in that stress mode. You're stuck because you're here. This part of your brain is working. This part of the brain can't be accessed. So let's talk about what triggers that total flip of the prefrontal cortex where you can't be a rational human anymore. Basically it's stress. It's the body perceiving something stressful because our body thinks when it's stressed, there's a danger. Unfortunately though, our bodies can't actually tell the difference between a massive tiger that's about to eat us and the fact that we were given a blue cup instead of a red cup or the fact that everyone in our household is losing their minds and there's stuff all over the floor and there's three loads of washing to be done. That stress is interpreted exactly the same in the body. So when your kid loses it and when you lose it in response, both of your bodies are saying, I need to get out of this situation. I need to either run, I need to either fight, or I need to freeze in order to survive. And that's why we just don't make good relationships when we're in this mode. We just don't get along very well at all. So the question is, once you're triggered, how do you get out? Basically, it's telling the body that you're safe. So being able to reassure yourself, and as adults, we reassure ourselves, but with our kids, we've got to reassure them because they're still developing that ability to self-regulate, to self-calm down. So with our kids, we have to reassure them that they're safe. So what makes us feel safe? Connection, comfort, being held, um, being able to calm that inner system that is going crazy, that makes us want to fight. So if you think about it from your perspective, when you're feeling that stress, if you have someone yelling at you, does it help? If you have someone raising your voice at you, does it help? If you have someone telling you what to do, does it help? And I'm pretty sure most of us would answer no. I know for me, if I'm in that state and someone, and usually it's my husband who tells me like, you know, when they give advice and they're well-meaning, but you don't want to hear it because you're in that, that survival state and that advice often feels like an attack. So think about it from your kid's perspective when they're in that freaking out state, even if it is over something as small as the blue cup instead of the red cup, which feels ridiculous to you, but to them, learning about their world and things that trigger them and feel stressful to them because it's unknown. Like they might've had that blue cup every day and it feels safe and secure to them and it's like the things that are common to us feel safe. So even if it feels ridiculous to you, when they're flipping out, they're in that survival mode. So when you come in and shout at them or tell them what to do, or even just raise your voice, you can imagine what's happening. That, that part of the brain can't come back on. It's still just survival mode and they're going to fight their way out of it, which is why I think we find when our kids are freaking out like this and we just try and come in with being louder and bigger and telling them what to do, all that happens is it escalates. And I know this because I've done it. I know this because I've been at my wits end. I've been tired out of my brain and Eamon has flipped out over the smallest thing. And I felt like, are you kidding me? And I've tried to come in with the nope, this is how it's run, this is what's happening, and try and just like put my foot down. And instantly it's like flip, he's not my child anymore, he's freaking out. We're having this like battle of wills and it just escalates and gets worse. So recently I've been coming at it a different way. Instead, when he's flipping out, I try to give him a little bit of space. I try to come in with, do you want a hug? Do you want to talk about it? Sometimes I just say, look, just go to your room and have five minutes, not in a, you're being sent their way, just like go cool off for five minutes. And then when I go in, sometimes he's calmed down and that part of his brain has come back in. Sometimes he's still flipping out in there, which is okay. And I try to come from, okay, what would make me feel safe? A hug, um, some understanding. So just saying, look, I understand why you feel this. Even if he's done something wrong, I think you can still find a little empathy in there. I understand you're feeling frustrated or I understand you're feeling angry because it just helps us to feel when we feel understood, we feel safe. So I think the biggest takeaway we can take from this is really just understanding what our brain is doing when we're flipping out and when we're in that high stress mode 
and how it's really our job to regulate that because our kids are still learning how to regulate that and it's our job to teach them how to do it for themselves. But until they can do it for us themselves, I think it's our job to help them when they get into that flipped out state. But we have to be in the calm state in order to help them because like we've said before, when two people are flipping out, it's only escalating. So how do you regulate? I think you need to make sure your needs are getting met because that flipped out state is needs are not getting met. So making sure you have enough time for yourself, making sure that you're getting what you need to be in that calm state. And it's not always possible. And yes, maybe you've watched this video and you're like, yes, this is how I want to parent. And then tomorrow you flip your lid and you think, oh, I just can't do it. That's okay. It's, we're human. We make mistakes, like it's going to happen. But I think the more you can do to try and keep into that calm state and make sure your needs are met so that when they're flipping out because their needs haven't been met and they're stressed and they've gone into survival mode, you can comfort and be okay to support them until that part of the brain comes back on. And then you can talk about right and wrong. And then you can talk about discipline. Then you can talk about what the consequence of that was. But if you try to talk to them about consequences and punishments and all that when they're still flipping out, none of it's going in. They're not hearing any of it. So that's what I wanted to talk to you about today. It's a huge topic and there's so much to learn and I'm really interested to dive into this sort of stuff. Let me know if it interests you as well. I need to go jump in the pool or something because I can just feel the sweat dripping off my body at the minute. If you liked this video, please give me a thumbs up. Please leave me a comment because I love hearing from you. Make sure you hit the subscribe button so that you get next week's video and I will see you next week. Have a great day.